Hi everyone, Amber here from So Majestic. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we are sewing up month three of Cotton Cut's Tree of Life Puzzle Mystery Quilt. Uh, so thank you to Cotton Cuts for allowing me to be an ambassador and I'm just having the best time. Uh, for this Tree of Life quilt, I am sewing up a large moonlit. It's my first time sewing a large and my first time with a neutral colorway and I'm absolutely loving it. We have two sections this month. We have a 3A and a 3B and we are sewing up two each of these sections. So I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please think about subscribing or giving it a thumbs up and I hope you enjoy. All right, we have month three for Cotton Cut's Tree of Life Puzzle and Mystery Quilt. And I have my Moonlit Clue here and on the back with the different fabrics. I always keep that with me. And here on the Clue, we are gonna be making two sections, two of 3A and two of 3B. So in the video, I'm only gonna do one of each. We have all our pieces down here. Uh, so as always, I have them laid out in the same order to make sure I'm grabbing the correct pieces. I am sewing on a Singer 5528. I'm using the Aurifil thread that matches the Moonlit and a 7010 uh, universal needle. And of course my pressing mat and iron is right here. So let's get started. For 3A, we are going to need um, two of these flying geese. So for this video, I'm going to do one. So we need a large triangle B. And again, I'm just double checking, making sure that I am grabbing the correct fabric, especially um, the very neutral color way. Some of them can kind of look the same. And then two smaller A triangles. All right, and then sew that. I'm gonna start on the right hand side. And they are die cut, so your smaller triangle will match up perfectly. And I am sewing at a full quarter inch seam allowance. I am not good at keeping a, a scant quarter inch, so I just use the full and it works out perfect. So whatever one you do, just make sure you're being consistent. All right, and we are pressing our seams to the top right. And I'm just gently pulling this piece back. I don't wanna tug and warp my fabric. Okay, and now we are attaching to the other side. You can pin or clip it. I'm just holding it right now because the piece is small enough. And we will be pressing our seams to the top left. And I'm just like giving a little extra press from the front to try to really set those seams. And I'm gonna set it aside for a minute because we have a section 1.2 and we need a large C triangle and two smaller D triangles. And I have my card right here I'm making sure that I grab the correct fabric, especially because this colorway is kind of just started. We're only on month three, so I don't really have all the fabrics memorized. Okay, and we are going to uh, sew them just like we did for 1.1. I'm gonna start on the right-hand side, making sure I line them up. And 
and that they stay aligned as I'm sewing. And again, we are pressing our seams to the top right and the top left. I'm making sure not to tug. I don't want to warp any of my fabric. And we're repeating for the left side now. I think I just jammed it up. Yeah. All right, I'm going to pick that out and then restitch it. My fabric got pulled down in. You can use a leader piece of fabric um, to help so that that doesn't happen. Usually, my machine is pretty good about it, but it's just so skinny or so this such a small piece of um, fabric on the corner here. So let's try that again. Start it a little bit further down, see if that helps. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then again, we're pressing our seams to that top left. I'm stitching the back first, or not stitching, pressing, sorry and then pressing the front. Okay, so now step 1.3, we are joining the piece that we just did, so this one here in 1.2, to the top of 1.1, so our first flying geese. And our center, they're all facing upwards, so I'm going to make sure that I fold this down, line them up, and again, because they're die cut and our seams were kept the same, they should match perfect. And I'm using clips because it's a larger piece. And our seams are going to be pressed down for this one. So I'm going to press the back first. And then gently open this up. Because um, they're flying geese, there's a lot of seams. Uh, matching up. So I'm just giving an extra press to try to keep it laying flat. Okay, and I set it to the side because now we are doing step 2.1 and we need two of these. So I'm going to be making one. So I need one C small triangle and one A small triangle. And again, I'm just taking the time to make sure they're lined up. Just makes my sewing more accurate. Okay. 
And then for this one, we will be pressing up towards the right, our C triangle. And now we need to add a D square to the right of it. And if you're doing moonlit, this one is very faint. So just make sure you're grabbing um, the correct or put it placing the correct side, right side facing up. And then we are attaching it towards the C side of that half square triangle. And now I'm not back stitching anytime I sew because these are all getting sewed together. So their seams will get locked when we are putting it all together. Um, but as a bag maker, it took me a little while to get used to that. So don't be worried if you are not back stitching. Okay, and we are pressing towards our D square. Okay, so we are on step three and we are combining what we've made. So we need to rotate step 1.3. So that's this one here. We need to rotate it so that um, the B triangle is on the left hand side here and our smaller A, I mean smaller D triangles are to the right. And then we are gonna sew our uh, 2.2 to the top and you'll know that you did that correctly because your a fabrics here as in the picture will be matching and just grab some clips because we have the center seam so i'm going to fold it onto itself and then our seams are pressed in the opposite direction already so they should nest together perfectly so make sure those are lined up and unclip them first and then I'm clipping the rest. And for this, our seams are being pressed towards the top, towards the smaller piece. So again, I'm just pressing them, the back seams first, and then gently opening them up and pressing the front. Okay. And your point should line up. Mine lines up close enough. I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm going to set that to the side for now. And we are on step four. So we have 4.1 and we need two of them, but I'm going to do one for this tutorial. So we need a small A triangle and a small D triangle. Cool. making sure that they are lined up. Okay, and then this one we are pressing towards the D fabric gently opening it especially these half square triangles it's so easy to warp your fabric i was having trouble in the carnival clue because i wasn't opening them enough 
and it was folding over here. So make sure that they are completely open though. Okay, so now we are on step 4.2 and we need to join an A square to the left. So our A fabric will be matched up with our A triangle. And again, you need two of these. So for the tutorial, I'm doing one. All right, and then for this one here, we are opening or pressing our seams to the left towards our A square. Okay, so we just finished up 4.2. So now we have 4.3 and we need to add a large D rectangle to the bottom. Be just like this, I'm gonna flip it up. Make sure I'm lining up my edges. Nice. Going to clip into place. And our seams are going to be pressed towards that D rectangle. Gently open that up. All right, so now we are on step five. And we are just taking our step from 4.3 and adding it to the top of the step three larger piece that we have. I am going to, there's no seam here, so I'm going to fold that down. Or there's only seams on one side, so we don't have to match them. And clip that into place. And I didn't say it, but you want to make sure that this um, first section is still facing towards the right hand side. The arrow is pointing that way. And then for this one, it is going to be pressed towards the bottom. So I'm just pressing the back first and I'm giving my seams an extra press. And then gently opening. All right, so this is our completed 3B, I mean, excuse me, 3A section, and you should have two of these. All right, I have my instructions here. We're gonna start with 1.1, and we need a large D triangle, or yeah, large, yeah, large D triangle. Make sure I grab the correct fabric. For me, that is the lightest one. And we need two smaller A triangles. We're making a flying geese again. Okay, let's start on the right-hand side. 
make sure I'm putting them right sides together and that I have my fabric on the bottoms not upside down. And we are pressing our seams towards the smaller triangles. So to the top right. And gently open that up. And then add our other piece to the top left. And then this one, we are pressing that to the top left as well. Okay, we are on set 1.2. So we are adding a large A rectangle to the top of 1.1. So I like to lay my pieces out and then flip them onto each other. That is something that I like to do to make sure that I am lining them up correctly and that they are going to fold together and I'm going to sew the correct side. Okay, and we are pressing towards the top A rectangle. So gently open that up. Okay, and we're gonna set this aside for a minute. And now we are on step two. We need a large D triangle and two smaller C triangles. Okay, so again, a flying geese. I'm gonna start with the right-hand side. Okay, and we're pressing towards the top right. And then the side to the left. And we are pressing our seams to the left on that one. Okay, I'm going to set this to the side as well. So we have step three. And again, there's two of them. I'm making one for um, the video. So we need a large F triangle and two smaller A triangles. We have lots of flying geese this round. 
I think I'm attaching my right hand side first. And I'm pressing, we're pressing them open the same way as before. So to the top right. Okay, we're attaching this one to our top left. And again, we're going to press our seams here to the smaller A triangle, so the top left. Okay, so now we are on step four. So we need to rotate step three so that F triangle is pointing downward. So this is step three. We're going to spin that around and we are joining it to the top of step 1.1, which was our A block or the one with the A rectangle, I mean here. And again, there's no seams, so we are okay. And this... Sorry, I just want to double check, make sure that I am doing this correctly. <laughs> and again, they should line up perfectly. Just going to grab some clips. Okay, and this is being pressed down towards the bottom. So I'm going to actually press it from the back like this. Hey, sorry, with all the different colors, this is a little confusing. So we are pressing our seams down. That is correct. I just want to make sure that I have it going the correct way. Perfect. So now we have our next step. We need to rotate step two. So step two was our D and C flying geese. Rotate it so the triangle is large triangles facing down and attach it to our top. And again, just taking the time, making sure that everything lines up nicely. And I'm going to clip it in place. And then this one, our seams are also being pressed down. So I'm going to press that from the back. And then gently fold it open. All right. So this is our 3B section. 
and you should have two of these. All right, we have just finished up month three of our Cotton Cuts Tree of Life Puzzle Mystery Quilt. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Don't forget to post your photo with your flat Nancy in the Cotton Cuts Facebook group for a chance to win. Uh, I'm going to link the Facebook group in the description as well. So I hope you enjoyed. Please consider subscribing or giving me a like. It helps my channel grow and I appreciate it so much. See you next month. Bye.